We are joined now by a member of President-elect Joe Biden's Coronavirus Advisory Board, Michael Osterholm. He's an epidemiologist, epidemiologist, I can say that word, and director of the Center for Infectious Diseases and Research and Policy at the University of Minnesota. Michael, good morning. Thanks for coming back. We appreciate you being here again. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Thank you for having me. Is, is President-elect Biden's goal to distribute 100 million vaccine doses in his first 100 days still achievable given how much trouble we are having uh, getting this vaccine into people's arms? Well, I'd call it an aspirational goal and one I think we must strive for. Uh, we know right now that every day we don't have vaccine in people's arms, people are getting sick and dying. And so I think every uh, effort must be made to do that. And, uh, you know, the team is behind him in every way they can to help make it a reality. Michael, on this broadcast before, you, you praised the efforts of Operation Warp Speed in getting us a vaccine, but you were very concerned about the last stretch. Why are we having so much trouble uh, in, in distributing this vaccine? Well, Anthony, as you said, I've been very concerned for some time and actually for over many weeks have been saying this last mile and this last inch was going to be a real problem. The last mile, meaning getting the vaccine to the populations that uh, are at highest risk, first of all, long-term care facilities and hospitals, uh, health care centers. Uh, right now, we have had a real challenge getting vaccine into long-term care facilities because the two private pharmacy companies that had the contract with the Trump administration to do that have been very slow in getting it done. Uh, second of all, in the healthcare setting, uh, it's been a challenge because many of these hospitals right now themselves are overrun with uh, the cases of COVID-19, and it's very hard to be able to coordinate both getting vaccine into these uh, healthcare workers at the same time they're working 16-hour shifts day after day. And, but that's coming. And it's getting done. And now what we need to do, is once we get those two done, we need to then get to the other high-risk populations. Age is clearly a critical one. You're seeing some states right now, they're already targeting those over 75. We'll move next to 65. If we cover those groups right there, we will start to really have an impact in the number of serious illnesses and deaths. We saw earlier in this broadcast uh, Charlie Daggett from London reporting on, at, from a racetrack where, where the British are putting vaccines in, in, in a huge number of people. Do we need to, to, to make that kind of an effort? We will make that kind of effort. Uh, first of all, state and local health departments, which really are the air traffic control towers in each state for moving these vaccines into the right populations at the right time, really have not been engaged in a way that they will be uh, with the new Biden uh, effort. Uh, they have not yet received support from the federal government to even roll out these vaccines. Uh, and so in that regard, it's been a real challenge uh, trying to hire vaccinators, the kind of programs where you actually get people registered efficiently. They know when to go, where to go, and how to go to uh, get their vaccine. Uh, I think you're going to see that all changing in the days ahead. And all I can say is we have to change it because, again, I, just in the time that we're doing this interview, I think, you know, 10 to 20 people in this country will have died from COVID. My That's what we're up against right now. Michael, how soon do you expect the vaccine will be widely available in this country? Well, we're going to start seeing it ramp up every day. If we get a third vaccine, uh, which may be approved in the next uh, month or so, uh, you know, by the second end of the second quarter, we could have uh, an abundance of vaccine. But then let me just say the last piece of that uh, last mile, last inch is getting people convinced they need it. We're still seeing pockets of great resistance to getting the vaccine, vaccine hesitancy. Again, this administration has done, not done nearly enough to help educate people about what these vaccines are, how safe they are, what they can do and the fact that they can not only save your life, but the life of a loved one. All right, sure can. Michael Osterholm, thank you so much for being with us again. We appreciate thank it. Thank you.